And welcome to the Javier Mendez podcast. We've got a special guest, Chris Greenman, who made me start this MMA journey, who we met Javier through years ago, filming fighters and interviewing them in his gym. Probably about 16 years ago, Javier, before Kane was champion. How long ago was that when he first came there? Your other AKA, not the one that I was filming at. Well, uh, first of all, I don't remember you at all, Lynn. No, uh, I know. No, not at all. I do. I, I do remember Chris, but I don't remember Chris looking like this. I remember Chris looking like a jacked up young, you know, you know, basically playboy type guy. But uh, you, I don't remember at all. Chris, I ah, man, that was the guy in the tight jeans. I remember me. <laughs> I don't remember Jack, you at all. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> but I, oh, well. I, I do I do remember Chris because he was uh, very smooth talking, very smart, you know, good looking guy. I remember that. And he's got shorter hair. That's about it. But uh, yeah, I, re I remember that. But I'm sorry, Lynn. <laughs> I don't remember you. Uh, you wear tight jeans. They were that bedazzled back then. Affliction shirts. I thought it would, I would look cooler. And I didn't. Nobody noticed. I was like, well, well, Randy, Randy gave me every freaking shirt they had. So I had every Affliction shirt there was, you know, with Extreme Couture. Oh, Randy Couture. Yeah. You worked with him for a while. I remember. Yeah. We, but we, had, <laughs> we, we, we both had MMA gyms. Chris and I had a gym in Livermore. And you were long existing before us. And we opened up with... Um, some of the scrap pack, like no. yeah, Jake Shields and all those. He was the main teacher, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jake Gilbert Melendez, I'm sure, because uh, Jake and, and and Gilbert during those times used to, they came to me just shortly around that time uh, after you guys probably closed, or you know, because Jake Shields started coming to us and Gilbert back right. in uh, I think it was 2000. I want to say 2007. 2008 right. when did you guys when did you guys close 2008 9 in that in that time period i think it was yeah, yeah it was during that time period that uh jake shields and gilbert melendez used to come train with us all the time and and uh yeah it was around that time so yeah but sorry lynn i don't remember you oh, maybe man. you're a good looking guy maybe you're a good looking guy back then but since then Speaking i don't know pizzas. the good life the good life got you Oh man, they call me Mr. Cheeks now, but that's what I aim for because that gets us more views. If like if I had smaller cheeks, I think the algorithm wouldn't like us as much on YouTube. You yeah. know how it is. So you know, have you lost weight? I, our views are down a little. You need to you know go get some more baklava or something. You know what I mean? Uh, I lost weight because of Manjaro. That's why I lost weight. <laughs> now I'm not on Manjaro. It has nothing to do with Manjaro. It just has a lot to do with continuing uh, on my workout regimen, you know, and uh, I needed Manjaro to kick me, kick me off, kick me in the, in the butt to get me to not uh, eat, you know, stop me from eating. But now it's just, it's all mental and, and staying uh, this, you know, just strict and disciplined, not, not strict as far as eating, just disciplined to working out because right. once you can maintain a weight and you work out, you'll be fine. But, but if you expand, less than you put in, then you're going to get fat, you know, and that's just the way it is. And I know that, I know that, but like everybody else that's listening, it's hard to stay away from the sweets or the carbs, you know, and the protein is all great and dandy, but I don't know, for some, whatever reason, we have too much protein. We get tired of protein, but we never seem to get tired of sweets or carbs. Yeah. I would like snack on an extra steak in the fridge. Maybe. I don't know. Chris, Chris makes a good steak. But it's interesting. How's Hob look to you? He looks the same. He looks good, he? yeah, for sure. He hasn't, he hasn't aged a bit. I showed him. I showed him like some of you the other day. He's like, "What? Okay, he still looks the same." Yeah, You're kind of timeless, huh? Especially, you no, know, like I, I don't think I'm timeless. I saw. I someone just sent me a picture, Lynn, when I was uh, 33, and I thought mm -hmm. I was 17. <laughs> <Look at that. laughs> Holy shit! I go, "What's this?" I go, "It was me." I'm like. Uh, I think I look like I'm 17, 18 years old. So I, I guess I've had good genes, you know. I've been lucky, you know, but had nothing to do with taking care of myself. It's just I think it's good genes, to be honest with no, you. You're, and you're the right. fact that you know the fact that I work out all the time probably helps, but I think good genes is 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 more more than anything that's helped me look like this. A hundred percent agree. I, we were talking about that earlier. Genes genes make or break you. You know, these I've known people that have smoked till they're you know a hundred and and you know, didn't get cancer. It's just like they had great genes, you know? So I think your, your, your DNA is your determination in life and the rest just helps. Yeah. yeah. George Burns, right? George Burns. How old was right. he? He died 102, 103 or who knows how old he was. He was ancient. 
and that guy was still around kicking it, smoking cigars, which are worse. Enjoying life, enjoying life, that guy. Right. right. And speaking about enjoying life, guys, hey, listen, I didn't know anything about this, but I saw I saw a thing with Islam Makachev, and he's speaking about uh, the disgrace in the Olympics and. I didn't know what he was talking about. And he said, if it was Russia, it would never happen. I didn't know what he was talking about. Right. And someone showed me, they, they showed uh, uh, the beginning of the Olympics with the uh, Last Supper, and they showed a lot of uh, individuals doing their thing. And this is just my opinion. And I think it's a total, total, total disgrace to the Olympics. I think it's a total farce. I think that in my honest opinion, I could care less about the Olympics because if this is the kind of things that they, they allow you to watch, then I could care less to watch the Olympics. It's supposed to be about athletes and the athletic achievements. It isn't supposed to be about your political views. It isn't supposed to be about your agenda, what you're doing. And I care less to watch the Olympics. I'm sorry. I don't care who thinks different. But I'm, hey, look, if I want to watch the gay channel, I'll watch the gay channel because it says it's the gay channel. But this is the Olympics. I want to watch the great athletes. I want to watch country versus country, see who's the best athlete. I don't want to see who's this and who's that. They, they got their place. They got their thing. Get your own damn channel for that. We don't need that. We don't need that. I am not watching the Olympics. I could care less. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. That's my opinion. I, I'm not against anybody and their gender. I'm just against this in the Olympics. I didn't watch the Olympics to watch this. No, I don't. I haven't watched them for the exact same reason. I used to like to watch wrestling in the Olympics. That's like you know, the one place that, that freestyle wrestling is showcase where I like to watch that. But but the same thing when you when you got Lady Gaga coming out with a beard and all this other crap, it, I I turn it off. I'm like, well, what's the point of what's the point of that? You know, it, it's it's just just to make a political stance in the Olympics. And France is just following following you know the United States lead in BS, and it's just disgraceful. It is. It's, it's horrible. It's, it's really the wrong platform. It's the wrong platform. They, they, they exactly. try to deny. They try to deny that's what. And that's not what we were portraying. It's another scene from another movie or story or something. It's. It's. I don't know. Okay. Somebody. Uh, okay. I, I watched these Australian people on uh, Sky News, and they're like, "That's the French. They do stuff like that to piss everybody off." Well, Lady Gaga's already ugly. Making a beard on her doesn't help anything. You know. I'm just, well, but well, well, this is this is my thing. Okay, this is my thing. I said the key thing. This is about athletes. Who yep. was on there that was an athlete? That's what I'm yep. saying. Hey, when, when they had the torchbearer, when Muhammad Ali was struggling with his thing, they had Muhammad Ali with the, with the bear. He was doing like this, and he's shaking. Hey, right. that was impressive. That was, that, was, that was honorable. That was like, wow, look at that. That's inspiring. What's so inspiring about this? Nothing's inspiring about this. If I want to go to a gay bar or lesbian bar, then I'll go there. That's that's for me to go. But don't put oh. it in my face. I didn't turn yeah. on that channel. I didn't turn on the channel for that. So it's, and my it's, voice it's, in my opinion, yeah, because I don't like it. And I'm not gonna watch the Olympics. I'm sorry, I'm just not. It's being forced on you to watch. And that's what's that's that's the bad part. You know, it's like you don't you're not really having a choice. You have to watch this BS if you want to watch the Olympics. So like you. I'm not watching the Olympics. I watch some highlights on if we win golds and stuff like that. That's it. So I missed that thing, but I saw the aftermath and I'm like, okay, we, we were doing something else at the time. But I, I get you on that, Hav. And I, I feel where you're coming from. No disagreement at all. It's, and you talk about disrespecting like the uh, Bible and the Christian and the Catholic Church. I mean, it's total disrespect the way they portrayed that. It's like, and, and the Islam. And, and it, the yeah, people from Islam are exactly. like definitely offended even exactly. more so. You know, my feeling is with fighters, guys. Stay away from religion, stay away from country, stay away from families, okay? Stay away from anything of that nature. Well, it's the same thing with anybody in, in, in anything. Stay away from a religion. I don't care what kind of religion it is. Stay away from it. It's none of your business. You, right. you shouldn't be out pushing your agenda on people and, and hurting and, and insulting people's religions. That, exactly. That's disgraceful. Exactly. It's disgraceful. Yeah, no, that's, well you said. Know, it's disgraceful. That's, it's disgraceful. Yeah. With you 100%, Hav. Um, you know, to take a lighter note here, what do you think about the fights that happened this weekend about Bilal Muhammad upsetting uh, Leon Edwards? <laughs> he trained well, with I can, <laughs> yeah, he, well, Leon trained with me, too, about uh, they both did. 2000, 2015. You know, he came for two camps. Not much, a month at a time. I worked with Leon a couple of times. He's an unbelievable guy, and I believe he'll be back. 
And for Bilal, I got to tell you, I had almost zero chance that he would win. I was hoping, I was hoping he would do it, but I thought for sure Leon was going to be, you know, smoking him like like what he did to Kamaro the second fight, and I heard what he did to Colby, and I thought, darn, that Leon shows up, Bilal's in trouble, and I was, I was to be honest with you guys, I was hoping Bilal would pull it off because I'll tell you, just my personal belief since Bilal's been on since he's been on okay in the UFC he's been promoting Palestine right from when I remember the first time I ever seen this guy he's carrying the flag proud as can be I think 2017 16 in New York you know here's this guy go where's this guy he's carrying his flag all around him so this guy has been for for the for the life of his career in the UFC has been promoting his people his country and for him to come out and say that the real fight is them, I didn't fight, they're doing the real fight, I got to tell you, you know, uh, I, I stand behind an individual that stands like that and stands for his people. And it doesn't matter to me whether it be Palestine or Israel or any other country, anybody that suffers, I'm for humanitarian rights. And to me, the ha humanitarian rights are definitely on the Palestine side, and I'm very happy that, that he's able to give them a voice and he's able to give them power and give them, give them hope. You know, it's just if the, if the roles were reversed, I would be on the other side. I'm not against one country or another country. I'm just against hurting children and, and innocence. That's it. It's right. not about one country or another, one religion or another. Innocent people don't deserve to be in harm's way. I don't believe God intended for us to hurt the innocents. Okay. If let's say Chris and I had a disagreement and we want to fight, let's fight. Right. Chris wants to carry a knife. I want to carry a gun. Well, he came with the knife. I came with the gun. Yep. But what does a child have to do with it? What does any child have to do with it? What does any right. woman that's trying to take care of her child have to do with it? They have nothing to do with it. So, you know, my feeling is, you know, we all have the same God, in my opinion. He's our God. He's everybody's God. In my opinion. Now, maybe if you disagree, and that's fine. Everybody can disagree. But my belief is that, you know, Humanitarian is my belief, and I believe in taking care of all people, all innocents. I'm not talking about people that want to fight each other. You want to fight? Go ahead. Go for it. No problem. But leave the innocents alone. That's all I'm saying. Well said, Hoff. You're, you're on it today. Again, a thousand, man. a thousand percent. And that's what was behind this. Like, he is the Palestinian champion, you know, in the UFC. Um, Tom Aspinall, now you told me about him before he – you know, fighting Curtis Blades, I kind of expected to go the way it did because he's strong and he could like stag, you know, stop people's wrestling. But I was telling Chris because we watched it together that he trained with the Gypsy King and you told me that. So that's how I knew his boxing was like beyond like what people expect. Well, he's a regular sparring partner. If I'm not mistaken, it's uh, it's it's uh, with Joshua, Anthony Joshua. Uh, oh, Anthony Joshua. Joshua. King, you know, yeah, Anthony Joshua. So so to me. Uh, was I, I know I know something about boxing, and if, if you're training with that caliber of a world champion in boxing, hey, a boxer is a serious competitor, okay? And if he's a world champion or world class, he's not going to spar you as a charity thing. You have to be able to give him some work. Either you're the punch dummy that he wants to use to work his craft on, but you better be good because if you're not any good, he's not going to use you no matter what. And the coach, who these, these are great coaches, these boxing guys have great coaches. They're not going to have just anybody spar their guy. It's a waste of time. That's why in boxing they have professional uh, fighters come and they pay them for rounds. You know, like Mike Tyson used to have guys come in and, and they used to pay these guys to come spar with them. And if you guys have followed boxing, you'd find out situations like Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes was paid to come on to be Muhammad Ali's sparring partner. And Larry Holmes became a world champion. So yeah. when you look at the odds – of that happening, you find out a guy is sparring with this level. That means this guy, his athleticism is super, super high. And that's why I looked at Tom Aspinall. I went, people are maybe sleeping on this guy. And uh, Curtis Blades, maybe he was sleeping on him. I don't know. You know, and maybe he just got caught with the right shot. Who knows? But one thing for damn sure, Aspinall is the real deal. And let's see what happens between, uh, you know, you know, John Jones and, and, and Miocic, because that's not a solid, uh, oh, yeah, you know, John Jones going to steamroll Miocic. No, because look what happened. I thought for sure, you know, if, if, if I was a betting man, which I'm not, but if I was, 
I thought, uh, you know, man, I love, I love, I love, I love, you know, Bilal, but I, I really didn't give him much of a chance. So I'm not going to sit here and go, I always believe he had it. No, I thought, I thought, I, I thought uh, Leon was going to steamroll him because everybody told me that the second fight that wasn't going good for Bilal and then the eye pokes happened. So I'm thinking, damn, uh, and Leon just took care of Kamaru and I didn't see that fight either. And he took care of Covington. I didn't see that fight either. But I did see the fight where, where Leon beat Camaro when, when, when he never quit. He never quit. He went through the fifth round, still down and out. He had a little bit left. And then even the announcers, I, I don't know if you remember, Chris, but the announcers were already turned off the lights. The party's over. But I was looking at Leon going, he doesn't think the light's over yet. So yeah, exactly. he still believed it. And there it went. Dug deep. Boom. There it goes. That kick punch right there. So for me... Uh, you know, this is one of those scenarios, you know, it's like you never, never, never count somebody out. And I'm a so-called expert. We collectively, all three, might be called <laughs> so-called experts. We but voted you know ourselves. We, we could be completely, completely wrong about these fights because you know, this you know, MMA, funny. too many games to lose, so many ways yeah. to lose. You know, you mentioned sparring partners and that that's, it couldn't be better said. When Cain Velez, Velazquez was coming up, we, we were down at Hackleman's, at the, you know, with Chuck at the town, and we heard about Cain. We're like, oh, this guy's really tough. This guy's really, you know, really t-. I mean, the rumors around because of who he was sparring with and how he was doing, and he ends up being, you know, as good as he was. Um, and the same thing about um, um, DC, you know, same, same thing. When, when he was coming up, same exact thing, you know, who, who they were training with, how they were doing. And that, that, that gives you foresight on how that person is usually going to be anyways so just like the it's, the cheat, it's the cheat code it's the cheat code that's why a lot of people think that oh coach is great i'm not freaking great i see these guys <laughs> in the gym you know this is truth is coming down yeah how hard is it for me to pick up even to be the greatest of all time i've seen this guy beat everybody up he's ever sparred exactly so how the hell is it going to be hard for me you know, so it's not hard at all. Not, how did I pick Islam Makachev to be a world champion? Because I see the same thing from him, except for Habib. He beats everybody up except Habib. You know, <laughs> so I see these things, you know. So where's the cheat code in there? The, the cheat code is I get to see with my eyes. You right. people outside get to watch and you yeah. think, analyze, and guess what? No, you're not going to have the right idea because I see with my eyes what's going on in the gym. And Lynn, you've been privy to some of that, so you know. Yeah. You know. I'm like, oh, he's beating everybody. But we should build it up. We should act like we don't know. And you should be like, I think. Like you're doing some psychic exercise. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, you know what? That used to work when the UFC first came out. Because you could bet on it. Still. You know, When you first could, could bet on the UFC, I'm talking the very first ones in Vegas when they, when they came out. We, we knew who was going to win. We, we knew everyone was going to win. So, I mean... Oh, every day, was every week, every every month was a payday when, I, when they fought, you know? But then they... Yeah. The, then everyone started knowing, you know, it, the, all the inside people like you and like like people that seen who's beating who. If you go there with the gym war knowledge, the sparring sessions, you were at the gym and you walk over to the UFC, kind of like we did. We were sitting with Chuck to get us front row seats. He's like, this guy's going to win. This guy's going to win. This guy's going to win. So, you know, Chris and I found our way outside over to the book and uh, everybody won. It was cool because you could actually see who beat who. But if you knew some martial arts, you know, you could tell. Eh, like right now it's a, it's harder to guess. Well, one of the best ones when when Tito would talk all the smack about Chuck and and me and Chuck would go to Big Bear with Tito and Chuck would uh, Chuck would annihilate Tito and Tito would just sit in the corner literally and cry. And I'm not and I'll say that to Tito. I know Tito was down the street. I'll, I'll tell him he knows it. But the fact is, we knew Chuck would win by a landslide when they fought. You know, and yeah. I mean, you, you see it like you said, you see it. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, he he went he went through the same thing with Habib. So, like you knew, and you're telling me because we're working together. Like, hey, Chuck's gonna just win, dude. We already know. And he's like, no, no, I really, really know. I I've seen it too many times. Yeah. And exactly. then it's just like so. So Habib knew Habib was gonna win. Exactly. And Habib gets got stalled for a year or two by them like yeah. trying to sandbag him getting there because he, he was already gonna win. Right. 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 He was already. Well, gonna speak, win. Yeah. Speaking about what you guys are talking about, and you're talking about Chuck and Tito. Okay. Uh, and the, and the, the last fight that those two guys had and Chuck's fighting him and, and I'm looking at this and I'm watching Chuck hit the pads and, and I'm going, 
I go, Chuck's playing. He's playing. That's not him. He's playing. He's making this up. He, it's not him. It's not him. So I was thinking, no way in hell is is Chuck lost that much. He's 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 just playing it up. He's playing it up. Chuck Chuck is one of the toughest mothers I've ever ever met in my whole entire life. Yeah. You know. So I'm thinking, no way did he deteriorate that much. He's just playing it up. He's playing it up for the camera. Then they go to the fight, and you go, shit. You know. I mean, I'm sorry to say it happens to everybody. You know, yeah. I've seen it with DC, you know, one surgery, you know, after the Miochik fight, the first fight, the second fight, we didn't have DC. The third fight, we didn't have DC. We still had a game fighter, but we didn't have the same individual. And it's the same thing what I saw with Chuck when he fought Tito, the last fight. That wasn't Chuck. That was not Chuck. Right. I thought he was, I thought he, Chuck was, was, uh, you know, was, was making it, you know. Yeah. And, and it turned out he, he wasn't. It's just that. You know, yeah. Chuck's had just too many wars and, and, and you know, he's a legend and, and to be respected always. Uh, Chuck's been nothing but a gentleman and, yeah. and a class act. And, and, and he will always be remembered as a gentleman and a class act. And the first, the very first rock star in, in MMA. The right. very first rock star. Nickelback. 100%. He's in a, He's there with Nickelback. He's their album cover. That was the funniest thing. We were all around each other when all that was happening. MMA was changing for you. As it was, and I've, I've talked with you about this, Alvin and, and Chris. I was around him when it was changing in front of our eyes. It went from it was kind of a side sport, kind of a niche, you know, maybe like some motocross thing where they jump swimming pools full of sharks, like Evil Can Evil. I don't know. Yeah, it wasn't like mainstream sports yet. And then Bonner and all those guys yeah. fought, and everything changed. The Spike TV, and then all of a sudden Chuck was a rock star, and then there was more rock stars. And it kept going. Yeah, you know? it, it was basically the the UFC was was about to fold up. But Bonner, Bonner, and Griffin <laughs> saved the show, man. Their, their show was such a bar burner that that changed the whole history of the sport. So, so for me, you know, who I am as a coach, who I am as a successful individual, has a lot to do with Lorenzo and Frank Fertitta and Dana White and Stefan Bonner, you know, and Forrest Griffin, and most importantly, Bob Meyerowitz for selling to the Fertitas because if you <laughs> the show. We would have never been where we were at. And, and then the person that opened the doors for us, they made it open everywhere, uh, open all the states, was Mark Ratner, the secret weapon. He was the secret weapon that the UFC knew they had. And you know why they knew they had it? Because Lorenzo uh, Fertitta was in the commission. He had to quit his job as the commissioner. And then he came on board and he hired Mark Ratner, which was genius because Mark Ratner was the most respected commissioner in the whole world and his word was anything you can trust anything he said take it to the bank because it was gold and uh, still to this day mark ratner is the class act he is the classiest most educated influential uh, uh individual in the mma scene from the individuals that know him and what's crazy is most people would never heard that name before but you know Unless, unless you really know the, the sport. So. Yeah, if you're like tier one hardcore MMA fan, you know. But if you're like the 90%, now they know, though, because they watch the Javier Mendez podcast. Absolutely. Because yeah. this is where they well, all come. Well, Even I mean, the yeah, casual. Yeah, we waited six weeks for you guys to get this information, so tune in, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're trying to – we're out here right now. Um, we're building a studio for the Javier Mendez podcast. In yeah, course. it's kind of nice. You guys built the studio, but I'm in the kitchen. I know. What the hell? The, it's the cool part of the studio. Like, we got a kitchen. And a studio. Hey, hey, wow. You guys got a beautiful location. I got a kitchen that doesn't have too many lights. So but I can go in the kitchen because nice it's the brightest out of everything. You, you have a great refrigerator behind me. That's a refrigerator. That's oh, sweet. shoot. A brown one? It's wooden. Oh, oh, no. It's yeah, a very refrigerator. good one. Refrigerator. Oh. That's nice. That's okay. Wow. Well, you know, Hop, we'll have you here when you're back in town. We'll do something in Newport together, have a couple shows whenever. Um, I want to be able to, if I'm out here, because there's a good chance that, you know, Chris will be having me come out here. We'll be able to fly up and film you at AKA once in a while when you're in country. We don't know how long that is. You're here and then you're gone. You're always here for like two weeks and then you're gone. Do you think you're going to be here for a while or no? No, no. <laughs> I, I, no, it was an idea. <laughs> I, I'm coming down. I'm coming down. Um, 
uh, after Umar's fight, after his victory against Corey Sanhagen, which is looking fantastic, better than ever, better than ever. I got this kid dialed in, me and Habib and the whole team. You know, we got him with, uh, with uh, you know, uh, Magomed from, from, uh, from back at home at, uh, at uh, you know, Abu Vanok's gym. You know, the, you know, he's the head coach over there, Magomed, me and Habib and everybody else, you know, Shamil. We pushed in on, on Umar and we got him dialed in. His brother, Usman, has been their big loyal supporter that, uh, you know, we're, we're here with him and uh, he's looking fantastic. Um, Eagles MMA, in my opinion, uh, is the best team in the world. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I said it, Lynn. I said it a few years ago. They're the best team yeah. in the world. And because, because I'm part of that team, I'm part of that. I'll pat myself in the back. You did a good job. <laughs> because, because it's like this. It's like GSP when he was like Greg Jackson's, okay? And he was considered Greg Jackson's. Well, it was the same thing. I'm part of Team Eagle, so it's part of AKA. So AKA is still in the top Good job, of the world, you know? Good job. So, yeah. so oh, yeah. and, and I'm, I'm telling you, we have, uh, we have uh, at the present time, we have three champions. You know, mm -hmm. we have Islam Makhchev, pound for pound, number one. We have Usman. And, and, and you know, I think Usman is the greatest, the greatest uh, uh, kickbox, I'm not kickbox, MMA fighter I've ever trained, most talented. Wow. And then uh, we just we just got the new uh, welterweight uh, Bellator champ who just beat the uh, uh, the, the uh, what's his name? Um, uh, uh, shoot, what am I? Uh, you know who I'm talking about? Uh, Rob, his name is, uh, yeah, Rob. If you Dog, guess Dog. in the comments, you win a brand new something. Rob Dog, yeah. yeah, he he beat he beat uh, he beat the guy that uh, to beat the guy that I thought couldn't get beat. <laughs> and he beat him. The guy from Ukraine. He beat the Ukra Ukrainian guy. And, okay. and, uh, and anyways, long story short, so they have three. And then we have, uh, at the present time, we have two guys in the PFL. They're undefeated and they're going into the semifinals. I'll be working their corner, uh, I think, in Washington, uh, I believe, uh, August 20-something. I'm not quite sure on the date, but it's in, it's in the PFL. And then on uh, September 20th, I'll be coming back to, uh, you know, for uh, Mo Alaric, my other guy. He's gonna fight in the semifinals in the Mena League for for uh, Saudi Arabia. So and watch out for Mo. He he's he's the hidden talent and he's unbelievable. And the other one, when people ask me, Amaru Magadov, uh, Magadov, sorry, Amaru. He just fought uh, for the Warriors UAE event where I was there. He, he he was the main event. This kid is is spectacular, spectacular. So he's someone to watch out for. So all these guys, you know, uh, Team Habib. Uh, is on the rise, and, and uh, the more these guys fight, the more people realize uh, what a great coach Habib is, and what a great team his father formed. You know, his father is is uh, still to this day. A lot of people don't really appreciate how great of a coach and great of a man he was. And I, my job is to make sure that everybody still remembers him as as one of the greatest coaches of all time. And, and uh, you know, I always continue to say that and believe that because I viewed it with my own eyes and I've seen his students and I'm getting credit for his students. I'm getting credit for his students. Wow. Yes, I added my two cents into it, but I'm getting the credit for his students, the people he brought up since little boys. Wow. Well, he wanted you to be there. He wanted someone to help him carry the torch. And he obviously trusted you. And there's Habib now. It's like you guys just compliment each other from what I see. Um any questions on anything, Mr. Chris? Man, that was just that was just so cool. You said that. That's all I gotta say. I mean, that, it takes a lot to do that because everyone these days wants to take. They're, they're all want to take credit for themselves, taking their own selfies and everything else. And just for you to say that, yeah, that's that's huge, bro. That, that's well, awesome. no, it's it's like this. You know, it's like you got to say what is and what is not. A lot of people were giving credit for Team Habib. I know for Bilal's win, and and you know what? That's baloney. That was his coaches. His coaches did a great job with Bilal. Bilal trained with us for two weeks, and before that, he trained with us a full camp when Habib got him ready in Dubai. How can you take away all those years that he trained with his coaches and say, Team <laughs> Habib, Team Habib, because uh, they yeah. have said it. Bullshit. I'm sorry. Well, that, that's, his, that's coaches, classy, his coaches did a great job with him. They stuck to the plan. They knew what they needed. Now, did Bilal learn from, from my gym and Habib? He learned more from Habib than he did me because I was not Bilal's coach. I did not take him under my wing. I did not sit and do a lot of things with him. The only thing I would do with Bilal is give him Coffee? encouragement. 
Yeah, because I'll tell you guys, the first I time, the first time, the first time he grappled with Habib, it was, I knew it was going to be a nightmare for him. So after he grappled with Habib and he was stuck on the ground, couldn't go nowhere, he's just shaking his head, being down. And I went up to him. I go, hey, bro. I go, he does this to everybody. Don't worry about it. It's only going to make you better. <laughs> you know? so, Your skills have all disappeared. You're not good at MMA said, anymore. He goes, he goes, yeah, thanks, coach, but it still sucks. I go, yeah, but you don't understand how many times I see him do that to every single person I've ever seen him grapple. Habib smashes everybody. So, so don't worry. You know, you're only going to get better. And the fact that Habib took an interest in you, that's incredible. Habib really cares about you and he wants to help you, you know. And and so, I, that, like I said, you know, I got the cheat code, you guys. I get to watch it live, you know. And, and the bottom line is, you know, I hear these things on Instagram. Oh, you know, it's because he trained with Team Habib. No, 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 no. It's because he trained with his great coaches. You know, he's got great coaches, you know, and, and these are great dudes. They deserve all the credit. Habib can say, yeah, I helped him a little bit. But don't take all the credit for what his great coaches did. Right. And Habib wouldn't do that anyways, ever. No, that's, no, that's Habib not, would never. Habib does not on, 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 on top of that, you know, uh, also, let's not forget the drive he had, the reason, uh, the, the Palestine uh, heritage and why he wanted to do this. I mean, let's not forget that because that's extremely important, too. That's yeah. a lot of driving force as to yeah. why he did so great because he yeah. had a mission. He, he, you know, in all his posts, I was told, I was told, and I don't know if this is true, but I was told that he lost uh, thousands and thousands of fans because of his continued sport for his country. And, you know, and he said, I don't care. This is what I believe in. I'm sticking to what I believe in. And you know what? You have to respect that. And me, you know what? Anybody that's against me for being a humanitarian and, and loving everybody, children of all religions, all races, all countries, then they're fine. Don't follow me either. But I'm, I'm for, for all kids. I'm for all innocents. I'm not for country versus country. I'm for the innocence. Innocence. Yeah. That, that's the key to me. It, is, it isn't, well, they did this, they did that. But what did a child do? Exactly. Do to you? What did a child do to you? I don't care what nationality that child is. I don't care what you think that child's going to grow up to be. What did a child do for you? What, what gives us the right to take away a child's life? Nothing. We have no know. right for that. God didn't intend for us to take children's lives. You know, did not. So for me, I'm not about countries i'm about just the right thing and the right thing is protect our children protect yeah. our innocence i have a quick hot take question for you Hob. what did you think about the attempted assassination you've been over there how's it look over in dubai against donald trump um i i thought originally that they might try that you know and, and that's my conspiracy theory that they didn't want him to win and uh and and when it happened wow isn't that amazing? He just happened to move. If he didn't do this. Yeah. And he doesn't look at notes very often. He just happened yeah. to look at the notes. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so it, I, it was a fluke thing. Now, my other thing I saw on Instagram, they showed people that they were filming this guy on the roof. They were filming yeah. the guy on the roof on Instagram. You see, hey, there's a guy on the roof and there he's squatting down. Well, the hell did that guy get so many shots off? I don't know. I, I'm not. I don't know. I don't know. I just know that that I I wasn't shocked. I'm just glad it didn't happen. And listen, whatever president gets on there, please stop the wars. All of them. Stop yeah. the wars. Stop. If we if we are involved in any way to help people, let's help. Let's not arm them with weapons and let's try to keep the peace for everybody. You know, nobody deserves to lose their children, their, their husband, their wife. You know, nobody, you know, hey, but like I said, you know, if we want to fight, like Chris, you and I want to fight, let's fight. We agreed. Shake. Okay, I'm going to shoot you. You're going to shoot me. No to problem. But why, gonna shoot your, why, why I got to shoot your children? Why I got to shoot Lynn? Because he's your friend. Lynn's not involved. It's me and you. Me and you want to fight. Let's fight. You know, that, that's my attitude. You know, no, it's, it's not about it's not about nothing else. But if you have a beef with me, I got a beef with you. Fine, let's fight. You want to fight with knives? I got a gun. You want to fight with cannons? Okay. Maybe I, yeah. maybe I give up. I don't know. But I'm just <laughs> saying it should not be the innocence. That's all I'm saying. The innocence. And, and I'm not about country. I'm about innocence. That's it. I'll, I'll tell you one thing. It was the biggest lapse in Secret Service security that I, I've ever read about or, or seen. 
you know, I know this, I know this space real well. It's what I do for a living. And I'm just the, the laps of that roof being covered. There's no excuse for it. Yeah, the director stepped down with it. A lot more heads have to be fired. It's, I don't think it's the, the street level. It's, it's not the the, the 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 regular Secret Service agent. You know, it's it's the it's the higher level that coordinated or did something with this because it was just too stupid to not happen. It it, it, it it's it's ridiculous. And everyone that looks at it says the same thing. You know, I just well, so this, this could very well have been like the, the the John F. K. You know, an Abraham Lincoln type scenario. You know, and it just it, it just so happened that, that Trump was able to survive it. You know, and like I said, look, whether he wins. Whether he loses, I hope the winner stops the wars. That's that's my my thing. I, I'm not I'm not for one person or another person. I'm for peace. That's it. That's it. Well, if you're, for, if for, you're for peace, keep peace. If you're for peace, Trump's the only president in I think history that has there's not been a war under his belt. You know, he never lost a yes. service. Yes. And, yes. And, yes. And, and I don't think there's any no one, anyone can't argue that. So you know, that's what he and did. that and that. And, 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 and for me, that's the reason why I favor him. And if he does right. not happen to win, then the person that does win, I hope they're doing the same thing that he would do. That's my, that's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying is I want him to win. Yes. My vote would be for him. Yes. But if he does not win, I hope whoever does win is for peace, to keep the peace. Nobody deserves to lose their child. I mean, you yeah, know, as I'm... a father, like, look, listen. You know, I just lost my niece. She's like, you know, uh, 32 years old. You know, she just lost her life to cancer. You know, she's 32. You know, she was a beautiful person. She lost to cancer. She shouldn't be losing her life to cancer. You know, but it happens, right? But what about the little babies? You know, what about them? I, you know, she shouldn't have lost her life either. There should have been some hope for her, but there wasn't. The life, God took her, you know, but, but the kids, I, the kids, I, I, I just can't wrap my head around that one. It's hard. It's, it's impossible to for me too. So. That is, is a this is a heavy duty podcast. Probably get a lot of views for a lot of different reasons, and I like it. I, I'm glad we're doing something. Best of luck with uh, you know Umar. Yeah, he sounds like he's ready to go. This is a contender fight, so he can fight for the championship belt, pretty much, right? Right. What we were told. What we were told, and things change all the time. We have to go with whatever the USC uh, d- dictates after the fight. The winner gets to fight for the title next. So, so whether that means Umar or Corey, I don't know. I just know what we were told, and I know we are ready. I know there's no excuses on what's going to happen, but I, I really feel that Umar's going to shine like no other, and he's going to prove why I say he's the next Bantamweight champion. I've been saying that for a while, and he's going to prove it. This is going to be his first top top uh, uh you know five opponent i think Corey's number two and he's going to prove to 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 me and the world why he deserves to fight for the title next he's a great kid everybody will love him he's as polite as they come he's as nice as they come and he's as fierce as a lion as they come or young ego as i call him nice that's awesome Havel. best of luck on their fight it's been so great to reunion you know have a reunion where we used to go film together me on the camera chris on the mic Coming to visit you at AKA, it's been 16 years. So kind of cool well, to bring that. I, I, I don't, I don't remember you, Len. So I'm yeah, well, I know. And I, came I, was was you, Len. I don't remember you. I remember Chris. I don't remember you. Well, that's what happens, man. That's the muscles. It was the muscles. I was outside yeah. having a snack <laughs> when you guys were eating. That's other. true. You were. I actually remember that day. <laughs> I remember that day because I was, I was, I was interviewing. A, uh, was it Jake and a couple of people, I forgot who, but yeah, you were outside. Cost check? No, we didn't. Yeah, interview. We didn't interview. Oh him. no, no, we didn't. Yeah, he didn't want to get interviewed by anybody. No, I didn't like him anyway. No, <laughs> no, Cost check. If you weren't somebody really big, he wasn't going to interview with you. If you basically uh, were interviewing somebody else, he would get upset at you because it wasn't yeah. about him. Cost check was very territorial like that. He he. Yeah. Uh, he did you know, that. He didn't like media. He didn't like media there unless it was about him. If you were not about him, he didn't want you there. Uh, you're recalling hey, that, that way. situation. He, you, yeah, you did it he, perfect. He, he yelled at, uh, we were interviewing Kane or somebody. He's like, you guys be quiet in here trying to box. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> Sorry, that was funny. Was, that, 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 yeah, yeah. Was, it's all good. Yeah, everyone's different. Wait, 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 wait. When you're the, when you're the head coach, you know all your children, and you know which of your children are naughty and which ones of them are nice. And uh, you know he, he actually has a lot of good points too. But he was naughty when it comes to the filming. He 
Yeah, that's him. You know, I I I I I, I don't have any hate towards the guy. Uh, he does nah. towards me, but I have no hate towards him. I mean, he he was, was he was a, a, funny he was a very good he was a very good fighter. He was a good fighter. And he he could be he could have been your best friend, you know, and, and and he was to some people their best friend, and he was very caring, you know. It's just to me, at one point, he wasn't. That's all. I'm just but, glad I wasn't in the building when he wanted it to be burnt down. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, have great talking with you, everybody. Like and subscribe, and thanks for tuning in.